Hello, Rowan here. Uh, so today we are going to do uh, the five, only five decks challenge, but it's going to be Oracle decks. Um, please forgive the state of my hands. I have a kitten and he does what kittens do. So that's that. Uh, so our top five Oracle decks, Oracle decks that I would run or rather save from a burning building. I would not run into a burning building for any of these Oracle decks, including the one of a kind one. Uh, some of these are very basic, but one of these is quite literally one of a kind. Uh, so I'm excited to get to that one. But let's start. Uh, first of all, I would like to shout out, uh, uh, Mm, oh, I can't remember her name, but her channel handle is A Riffle in Time. Uh, she's the one who originally took this tag from Book Talk and converted it over to Tarot Tube. Um, so the only five Oracle Decks challenge, as opposed to the only five Tarot Decks challenge. So we're we're just gonna focus in on Oracle Decks for today. Um, I don't have an easy time finding oracle decks that I like. I'm sure I'm not alone in this. This seems to be something that other people talk about as well, uh, but oracle decks can be difficult to to find a good match with because number one, a lot of them have very little cards. I don't like an oracle deck that is anything less than 50 cards. 50 cards are bust. I have two oracle decks that are less than 50 cards in my collection. One of them is an indie deck and I shouldn't have bought it quite frankly, but I do love it and I do use it a lot, but it's very limited in how I can use it because it's only 45 cards. Uh, and then the other one is the one of a kind one that I'm going to mention. And this one might end up with more cards in it one day. I don't know, uh, but we'll get to that. Let's start with some mass market options. Um, most of these are going to be mass market. Two of the decks that I own are indie. One of them is the small one. So I, even though it's great, I wouldn't repurchase it if I lost it in a fire. I don't think, I think I would probably just let it go. Um, even though it was expensive, it's not that key to my collection. Um, it's not quite a regret because I'm happy to have it and use it, but if given another chance, I don't think I'd buy it. Anyways, moving on from that one, I'm not even going to name names. That might be a separate video. Let's talk about a mass market deck that you probably already know is going to be in this video because I brought it up in my very first video that I made on this channel. And that is going to be uh, the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck. This is a round deck that is uh, based on archetypes by Kim Kranz. It's collage and watercolor. Um, very beautiful deck. But uh, even though I would still purchase the pocket version of this deck, I would want to go, like, if, if, if I had five decks, I had enough time to guarantee that I could safely get five decks into my hands, um, this is one of the ones that I would like to not go without, ideally. Um, the archetypes in this deck really speak to something unique, in my opinion. They are... They're truly archetypes. A lot of archetype decks, like another one that I'm going to mention, are archetypical characters, but these are archetypes that you find throughout life, not just in character, uh, but in setting, in um, object, in energy. And I think that Kim Kranz really tapped into something special when she was making this deck. I know she's educated in psychology and literature, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so it makes sense that she would make something like this. But um, yeah, I just, I really love this deck. And when I need a clarifier that's not going to make me even more confused, this is what I turn to. And I am assuming that with these decks, somehow magically, even though I don't store them together, I have an easy time. Oh, I really need to be careful. This looks like a nipple and YouTube is going to censor me. Um, I'm assuming that we get to take the guidebooks with us. Uh, I'm just getting my guidebook out of my tarot bag here. Uh, this is the guidebook for the Wild Unknown Archetypes. Very good entries for every single card. It's got media that you can consume as a follow-up. It's got notes on the side that you can read for just a little bit more. Black and white uh, images of the card. Some people might not like that, especially because color is so important in this deck. But Quite frankly, I can do without the thumbnail altogether. I don't need it. If this had been made smaller so that it could somehow conceivably fit in a box with this, I would have liked it better. But hey, 
that's what the pocket edition's for, and I am almost certainly going to buy it, even though there's no way I need two copies of the same deck in my collection. But here we are. Uh, all right, so Wild Unknown Archetypes. It's mass market, but I'd go back for it. Well, I wouldn't go back for it, but I'd grab it, you know? Uh, then we have another mass market deck, the Citadel Oracle. Uh, this one just matches with everything that the Wild Unknown Archetypes doesn't. Uh, so I pair this with so many of my decks because it is minimalist and black, white, and red. It just it works really well with a lot of different decks. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And I like that it has both titles and keywords. It gives me multiple different options to jump off of, which makes this deck rather intuitive. Um, the artwork doesn't give you a whole lot to work with, but I, I think that's a skill issue, quite frankly. Um, get good. No, I'm kidding. If you don't like this deck, then that's between you and God, and it has nothing to do with me, and my opinions on it are useless. Uh, but I genuinely love this deck, and if you don't, that is that is perfectly fine. You don't have to like what I like more for me. Um, it's annoying to shuffle, but not impossible. The Wild Unknown Archetypes is worse. Um, I do hate the box. It's a Liminal 11 box with this unnecessary multi-part system. You can store it upside down and then let it fall out when you open it but this the way that I store my boxes this bottom flap frequently gets caught on other boxes and falls open and I don't want the cards to like get messed up so I do not store it that way I store it the way Liminal 11 intended unfortunately um, but that's the Citadel Oracle. This is this is an archetypes deck that deals exclusively with the characters of like the archetypes of people, which at first I didn't think that I would like, um, but I've made it work. It works really well. I get a lot of really good readings out of it, and I think it's really pretty, and I think it's really affordable for a mass market deck, and I think it has enough variety in it, even with it all being about characters. The way you can read this deck is uh, dynamic. It, it is quite a dynamic deck despite everything it has against it. So this is one I'd go, uh, I would protect. Uh, my final mass market choice is going to be a weird one. Uh, this one's relatively new in my collection, but it's one of my more expensive decks. As you can see, it came in a, un well, you can't see the box that it came in, but it came in a huge box because I went ahead and made a bag for it because I did not want to keep it in the box. But then my cat spilled coffee on the bag and I had to wash it. And when it went through the dryer, it got even smaller. And now I can barely fit the deck in there. So whoopsie doopsie doo. But this is the Tantric Dakini. Oracle. Um, this is a collage based deck uh, that is influenced by, uh, well, tantric philosophy and um, worldview. Cardstock is very thin, very thin. This thing is so flimsy. But uh, it is a beautiful deck and it's really challenging and I like to use it with some of my more challenging tarot decks. Uh, for example, I like to pair this one with the Tarot is Color, which is the paint splotch deck. Um, I think that this gives a very interest and very, nope, a very interesting insight uh, to the possible interpretations of the paint splotches. And uh, as such, I do like to pair those two together. I also sometimes use this with my intuitive night goddess for some shadow work. Um, even though it doesn't super well pair with the intuitive night goddess, they are both collage, so the vibe is there. It's a little bit busy of a spread when you pair them together, but I do like it. One thing to note about this particular deck though, hold on just a moment. Oh my goodness, the guidebook is enormous. It's huge. Um, whoever made this deck, Nick Douglas and Penny Slinger, uh, they took themselves very seriously when they made this, which quite frankly, good for them. I applaud them. Um, but in order to study this deck, you also have to take it very seriously. So this is a deck I have not properly dug into yet. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I would save it. I, I want to, I want to spend more time with it and I don't want to have to pay another $40 to get this deck. Uh, so this is one that I would save. Um, I didn't actually pay $40 for it. I got it on sale on Amazon, but it's frequently $40 and it's, quite frankly, the cardstock is not worth that. You're paying for the book that comes with it, but it's, it's a great shadow work deck and great for any questions about psychism. 
So that is the Tantric Dakini Oracle. My last mass market choice. All right, so before I get to the one that I'm really excited to show y'all, uh, let's talk about the Poesis Oracle. This one is an independently produced deck. Uh, this is the second edition that I have here. And uh, this one does not have a physical guidebook. Uh, it does have a little pamphlet that it comes with, but the pamphlet is basically useless. Uh, so we're not gonna talk about that. Instead, let me mention that this guidebook that it does not come with is instead in the form of a bunch of poems that you can access via a website that is on the inside of the, uh, on the inside of the pamphlet. The website presents the poetry as white text on a black background. Uh, the last time I checked on desktop, it is not something where you can even highlight the text. I believe the computer registers all of the text as images. I have a Google phone though, and one of the cool things that my phone can do is highlight text that's in images, and so I actually compiled a PDF of this document. Let me show you. Here we go. The Poesies Oracle, an Oracle deck and poetry collection, poetry written by Megan King. This is from A to Z, although there is no Z. Uh, this is from A to W, all of the poems associated with the cards in this deck formatted as true to uh, the website's intention as I could reasonably get it while still making a printable document that doesn't take 40 some odd pages. Um, so I hope I did Miss Megan King right. If not, I challenge her to release her own PDF for this deck. I'm sorry, but it is just not acceptable to have a deck that's got a PDF guidebook that is as inaccessible as this one is. There is no PDF guidebook. It's all online. You can only get it online. And quite frankly, that's that enrages me. So um, there's a link to this document down in the description bar so that if you have the Poesis Oracle, you can have a PDF of the poetry as well. Uh, and quite frankly, I want Megan King to release her own PDF of it so that I can stop being a bandit because uh, that's what I feel like. I feel like a bandit. Um, but that's, that's a thing that I did and I'm happy to share it. I do not want to make any money off of it because it is not my work. I am just trying to distribute work that is already freely available on the website to anyone. You do not have to buy this deck to have access to the poetry. So I don't understand why there's not a downloadable PDF guidebook, but I'm not going to gripe about that anymore. Even if I wasn't able to grab my uh, printout version of that, I, of course, have access to it through my Google Drive, so that is something I would uh, not necessarily need the guidebook for, but I would still like it uh, if I could keep it. But then I'd also want to keep my printer, and if there's a fire, that's not happening. Now let's talk about my most specialist Oracle deck. I don't actually use this one very often, but it easily is the most important of all of my decks, and it's the one that I would grab. Even though I have backed this up entirely uh, digitally, um, so I do have a digital backup of it, the physical copy of it represents so much work, sweat, tears, love, that I just have to, to keep it. Um, this is a handmade Oracle deck that I made. I wanted a deck that is based on color and um, I couldn't find one that I liked. So I made my own and I'm still not entirely convinced that this is the final deck. This is what I want. This is, this is the final copy. But there are a lot of cards in this deck that I think are perfect and that I wouldn't trade the world for. Um, some of these cards are really on the nose with what they represent. Some of these are a little bit less so. Uh, this one is one that's a little bit more literal. This one, everybody asks me what it means when I show them this deck. This one is one people seem to like. This was actually the first card that I made in this deck. There are 36 cards in this deck, and eventually I do intend to put it up on make playing cards so that I can have my own copy of it. And if there was interest, I would be willing to perhaps sell copies of it to others, but I, I don't even know if it's finished yet, so that's something that's really far in the future. I don't, I don't know if this deck is complete. I don't think that it is, but I also don't know if I'm going to return to it. So this might be something 
that I record just for the funsies of it, just to have that recording of it. This card goes both ways. Some of these are intended to be a specific way. Some of these go either. There's a lot of cards in here that I feel like are duplicates. Some of these are try hard. Some of these I feel like I threw in the towel. This one I love. This is one of my favorites. It just gives me such mother energy. It's so nurturing and loving. Love that card. This one is another one of my favorites, but this one is one of my least favorites. So, you know, um, this deck has its winners. It has its losers. This card never shows up correctly on camera. It's uh, neon orange and neon yellow, but they, they both show up really strange on camera. Uh, yeah, so that, this deck, oh, and another reason I probably wouldn't ever sell this deck or that I'm contemplating whether I should sell this deck, I should say, is that this card ended up looking a lot like a Kim Kranz card. I didn't intend it to. It's so, okay, let me talk about this for a second. These two cards are meant to be contrasting cards. This is the the reality of being seen and being accepted for who you are. This is the inner eye that critiques constantly. So this is the inner monster or even the outer monster the, that watches you and judges everything that you do and is the nasty little voice in your head. And this is simply the, the watcher. This can be source spirit. This can be your inner monologue that's kind and good or even your inner monologue that doesn't beat you up all day but is pretty neutral. Um, this can be I mean like it's it's a it's an semi-abstract watercolor deck that's meant to evoke feeling it's an eyeball it can be anything you associate an eyeball with and if you don't think it looks like an eyeball whatever else you think that it looks like it can be that too um but yeah I I think I got a lot of feelings in here but I don't think I got enough and I don't know if I will ever go back and flush it out the rest of the way because this was a lot of work to make something that's barely usable, quite frankly. But I love this deck so much. So if you ever see a deck that looks like these cards come out online called, uh, I, think, I think right now the working title for it is um, the texture of color, but I might go with the texture of feeling or the color of feeling. I don't know. All of those sound pretty corny, so we'll see what I actually go with. Um, but yeah, that's my own special deck, and I would save that in a heartbeat. I spent so much time making this, and it means a lot to me, even if I don't use it all that often. When I do use it, I find it very insightful, and it often makes me cry. Um, it's just not done. That's all. <laughs> All right, uh, so to review, we have the Wild Unknown Archetypes cards. Uh, we have the Citadel Archetype cards. Those are kind of hard to see in this lighting, but there you have it. Uh, we have the Tantric Dakini Oracle, which I have in its special little bag. We have the Poesis Oracle, and we have the Texture of Color, uh, which is my own handmade, homemade deck of cards. So these are the Oracle decks that I would save, and some of them pair with the Tarot decks that I would save. This one, this one, uh, this one pairs with all these, whether they look good or not, I use these with Oracle decks. This one does look good with the um, Rosebud Tarot. This one looks good with Tarot as color. This one looks good with Zeke's Arcana, and with a lot of other decks that I own. Uh, this one looks good with a, a lot of decks that I, I'm babbling. Anyways, I've held you up long enough. We're looking at a 20 minute video here, uh, just about. So thank you so much for hanging out with me in the back of my car. Uh, I hope you enjoyed talking about Oracle decks. If you are watching this, please, please, please leave a comment talking about your favorite Oracle decks or ones of my choices that you hated because I really want to hear from literally anybody who watches these videos. The entire purpose of making these videos is to create tarot community for myself. So please uh, do, 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 say things to me. Um, you can find links to these down in the description bar. You can also find a link to the Poesis document down in the description bar. Um, I'm also going to link a Riffle and Times original video down below so that you can check hers out. Uh, uh, I mean, you've probably already seen it, but whatever. We're already over time here. The camera's cut me off twice. Thank you so much for watching this. Mwah! Bye!